just about to leave. I can only second that. <laughs> <laughs> just about to leave. Tom phoned me up. You know. He said, I'm dancing very regularly. I don't know who he's praying or doing something. Right. And he said, but it's just at half seven. I'm finishing at half seven, so I'll be up for you. So the boy said, I'm get a finish for you. It is quite a light agenda, to be fair. Yeah. Excluding. <coughs> I don't know if you've answered this question for me. I meant to ask, ask someone in the office if they know if you've If somebody wants to see, um, <coughs> like if, say, someone wants to see if I voted for the last five elections, is that something that they can do on the internet or is it something on the open? No, no. 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 What to but, see how you voted? No, no, not how. No, the fact that, but see if you voted. Oh. Because you get, you get. I've seen it before. You get, you know, that chap's photo in every election in one body. So really, yeah, you get that. And you get other people who haven't voted at all. So, so you know. How do they? How do they get that talent? Because I guess when you go into the polling station, you've got to cross your name off. They mark your name off, don't they? Yeah. But you could walk out with a voting slip and not actually vote, couldn't you? Oh yeah, but not many people would, would do that. Yeah, no, I've got no, no idea where that sort ask, of information is happening. No, I meant to ask what it was down at the Conservative office today, yeah. and I all that time. Right. Mm. I wouldn't think that that sort of statistics would be available on Why the internet because of data protection. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen it for the Conservatives get it, I've seen that list. But as I said, I was down at the Conservative office today, and I forgot. Maybe that list is down to telly. Because you can't, you would tell me if you did tell it as you went in. Yes, they asked you your numbers. Oh, no, this is, this is official stuff. This is. Yeah. I'm what, sure. Say who's voting what? Just to you say, say you don't say you vote for because you don't know what. No, just, just say this chap, John Ash, has voted every election for the last 15 years. But equally, it would be just as important to keep secret that people choose not to. as a general duty to consider the following matters and the exercise of any of its functions, equal opportunities, race, gender, sexual orientation, marital status, age, disability, crime, disorder, health and safety, human rights. Okay, emergency evacuation procedure, in event of a fire alarm, fire drill, or other emergency signal by the continuous sounding of a bell, please exit the room by the exit doors indicate and several at meeting point in the car parking area. Film and recording of meeting in line with the openness of local government bodies regulation to 2014, this meeting may will be filmed, recorded by the town council members of the public. Right, um, agenda item one, submissions from the public, <coughs> so to adjourn this meeting. Do we have anything, Stephen? Yes, please. Yeah. <coughs> 
Um, I'd like to say something about the, uh, the post office at um, Bradley Pavilions. <coughs> um, you, some councillors may recall that uh, three years ago, the, um, the council received a letter um, with a big fanfare saying the post office at that location is going to be um, refurbished and um, it's going to be made more convenient and modern and it would be providing in this letter in bold longer opening hours <coughs> um, and so on the back of this letter um, it told you that um, instead of being open 9 till 5.30 and closed on Sundays, uh, it is now going to be open 8am to 8pm and the same on Sundays. <coughs> so that was all very good. Um, what actually happened was, um, I mean it's been a disaster story from the beginning because um, there were delays um, in actually implementing the uh, refurbishment, which were, weren't properly announced. Um, so, and then when it was actually completed, since then, there's been, they don't seem to have been sticking to the opening hours for several years. Um, and they've been sticking notices up saying, I'm sorry, uh, we're going to have to have reduced opening hours, or I'm sorry, we're going to have to close for two hours over lunch. Or, or whatever and as far as my experience is that it's actually rarely open for the claimed um, longer hours so the latest development is that when I went there a couple of Sundays ago to to use the services <coughs> um, I was confronted with a notice on the front saying we are making a small change to the opening hours at this post office branch <coughs> effective from Sunday the 29th of September which is the day I went and on the notice it gives a new set of opening times and the opening times are identical to how they were before the refurbishment with one exception so in fact, they're actually over the week, half an hour less opening times now from the 29th of September. So it's gone back to nine o'clock to 5.30 and being closed, uh, only open Saturday morning and closed on Sundays. So it's a complete regression to what, to what we had before. <clears throat> so I've just done a back of, uh, back of the envelope calculation and um, their so-called small change to the opening hours is actually 37 and a half hours each week. <coughs> um, so, I mean, reading the letter that was presented at the time and was sent to the local councillor, Paul Hardwick, um, you know, it's saying this refurbishment programme is underpinned by government investment. <coughs> oh, well... <laughs> It seems, you know, we've already got a bad deal in Bradley Stoke with the post office being in the wrong place, for a start. Um, and it seems now, you know, we've been conned with this because we're, we were told we're getting a better service and actually it's, it's now gone back to being slightly worse than it was before. So, you know, I'm incredibly disappointed by this. Um, and I shall be writing to the post office and to Jack Presti, because it is involving government investment and I imagine some of the councillors might want to do the same because it's incredibly disappointing. All our neighbouring areas have post offices that are open for the long, well, longer hours. Um, so you can, uh, Little Stoke, you can get that one is open as hours should have been eight till eight every day. Um, the one in Stoke Gifford, Ratcliffe Drive, is open for longer hours, opens at 8.30. Um, Patchway at the spa there is open every day, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. So, you know, we're the biggest town in North Bristol and we have the poorest service. So, you know, it's just, 
it's just not not good enough really. Um, so I just wanted to raise that to the council's attention in the hope that you might um, be able to um, express your views to the, either the post office or Tesco. Now, who's, who's, um, whose fault it is, I, I'm not really sure, because from conversations I've had with the people there, I mean, I should say, the issue that they've had, uh, allegedly, uh, with not sticking to the opening hours, it's that some of, or one or more members of staff have been ill. But that, you know, as I explained, that has been going on for three years. Now, the post office, or Tesco, they're both massive organisations. You know, this isn't a little village post office where there's just one chap doing it, and if, if he falls ill, then obviously it can't open. These are massive organisations. So, and it's been going, it went on for so long, organisations of that size should be able to bring in replacement staff, you know, trained temporary staff from other, from other places. Um, tes I understand it's actually staffed by Tesco people from a conversation I had. So, I mean, why couldn't Tesco bring in people from other places or, or train? There's loads of, hundreds of people work at Tesco in Bradley Slope. Why couldn't they have trained some other people and brought those in to, to, to give cover for the, um, the, when the people were sick, a long-term sick? Oh, Steve, so, I think so you made it your really, well there. really disappointing. Um, I think perhaps you should have said this to full council rather than finance, but I still do take your point. Um, this letter that you have, yeah. it went to Paul Harwood. Do yeah. you have a copy of that? Are you aware? Uh, I would guess the chair, uh, the clerk had a copy of it. Yeah. Could you could you email a copy of that, please, yeah. to Sharon, and perhaps yeah. we could construct the letter? Oh, yeah. yeah, we can definitely write. Yeah. Write a letter saying uh, whether it's signed by you or signed by me. I don't mind. Just say, you know, we're not happy with the promises yeah. made, etc., etc. I'm sure you do that. Um, because it was in the twin, in the July full council minutes uh, when this was announced that the chair commented that this was good news for the town. Uh, well. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Anything else, Stephen? No, that's it. Thanks. No. Okay. Are we convened the meeting then? Thank you. Now we've got to receive apologies for absence. I've got a. An apology from Tom Adichie who said he's going to be late. I've also got apologies from Elaine Hardwick and Andy Ward. Nothing from Tony. No. Good. No. No. Okay. Agenda item three. Declarations by members of under the Local Government Act 1972. No. no. Number four. Announcements by the Chair. I don't have any. Number five, to confirm the minutes of the meeting on 21st of August 2019 as a correct record. <coughs> we have this in your pack. Has anybody got any comments? I yes. just proposed them. I proposed them, proposed by Ben. Okay. Yeah. Second in from Fabrizio. Who in favour? Yeah, carried. Well, one extension. Right, if you'd like to chat about now, while I do this, uh, agenda item six, to deal with any matters arising from minutes of the meeting on 21st of August, and 6.1 is provision of the mugger equipment facility at the Jubilee Centre. That's uh, quotes are currently being obtained, and we'll come back to this meeting, hopefully. The next meeting. Was that it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just a bit quicker then. <laughs> yeah.
That's my report, I'm sorry. That's why it will be critical. I'm going to make a comment. <coughs> right then. Agenda item 7, <coughs> matters within the scope of the Finance Committee, 7.1, renewal of all sites, health, no, I can't do it, it's a drafting, sorry, it's not a Right then, Agenda item 7, to deal with matters and correspondence referring to work within the scope of the Finance Committee, 7.1, quotes for replacement of circuit board at Brookway Activity Centre. Okay, yep, yeah, so there's a report in the, in the pack. Um, it's something that we need. Um, I've been working with the, um, the, well, the, the, the sort of management company that looks after the electrics and plumbing for the site, um, and we are maxed out on our uh, on our current distribution board. So uh, we've gone to uh, get the three quotes as as per usual, and all the information is in front of you. So uh, and, uh, on this one, A1, um, they're the guys that currently maintain and service our, um, all the services around the town and they come in considerably cheaper. So, um, for me, yeah, I and mean, obviously they, I would commend them to do. Okay, opposed? Second day, moved. Carried unanimously, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> 7.2, Hookway Activity Centre Site Works Update and Agreement of Payment Schedule. You have that table. Okay, so as we go um, start through the Brookway Works, um, where we have the new, uh, we take away the, the hard ports and we put into new parking bays. Um, it's envisaged that the project will take about four weeks, so we've got a payment schedule that's in front of you tonight. Um, where obviously we'll need to um, get the authority from, from council to, um, to trigger the, the, the payment stages throughout the, um, throughout the project. So the information is in, in front of you. Uh, at the end of each stage, I mean, I'll be there every day anyway, as per all the other pro uh, projects that we'll see. Um, but at the end of each stage, I'll go through all the work. Um, go through all the paperwork and if, as and when we're happy I'll sign that off and then we will get paperwork then uh, with an invoice so um, for, for us to, to pay so um, I think that's basically the information there so it's over three stages okay at end of the first week end of the second week and then at the end of the, uh, the project um, so I think best way was it to We've well, got to a recommended, to if you read the recommended way forward, points one to five, that is what we would like the council to consider. Who do the two nominating councils today? Well, that's it. Any, it's for any, you to decide today. Who's yeah. available, I guess, yeah. on that day. We need day someone for a quick turnaround. quick turnaround. So just give, like, an email. Yeah, an email with the documentation <coughs> that it's been signed off and a copy of the invoice. We did the same with the skate park. Okay, that was a, a lot more complicated, so we need someone that will do a quick turnaround to approve. Would you do a quick turnaround, John? It would make sense to have the chair and yeah, finance as one mm -hmm. of the two. And Is it the other have to be on this committee or any other council? Well, it's just somebody who is willing to do it and that can, who always gets to their emails quickly. And I'm willing to do it, but normally my, I don't normally read emails at the end of the day, but I could have felt like I've done the past before the show. But I think that the the I, if, if all goes to plan, obviously it does say the above schedules are subject to any adverse <coughs> weather conditions which may affect work progress. These, um, the sign off dates would actually be on a Friday. Oh, that's fine. So there would be potentially. So what we're saying is if, if you send out the email at lunchtime and we don't reply till eight o'clock at night, that's okay, is that? Or do you want us to reply immediately? If, if, we, if we, I mean, it's no disaster. Um, but because the only reason I'm saying that is between Friday the 18th and 25th of October, I'm in Portugal. Right. I still do my emails, <laughs> but I don't take the people on the beach. Yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible attitude. <laughs> <That's absolutely laughs> um, so yes. perhaps it better not be me then, if it's going to be on those two dates. Mm. I mean, it, it's, it's not going to be too 
major because um, it's going to be honest, it comes up on my week. phone, so I won't see it anyway. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it, it will need to be a fairly quick turnaround in terms of I'll, I'll get the information, I will sign it off, I'll ping, ping that to, to the councillors, and then we'll just, if we can have that within a, a 24 hour turnaround, I suppose we could. Well, because actually, that, 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 that would, you'd be, I would anticipate you'd be, you'll be signing the stuff off on the Friday, Friday yeah. so then you'll send it out, yeah. and then the payment dates are the following Tuesday, yeah. so yeah. you've got the weekend. Oh, that's, 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 that's fine. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. It's not like you're in the case of half an hour. No. Yeah, okay, well, if you want to put down Ben and me, then. So I hope, mm -hmm. as we do, the recommended way forward with John and I is to nominate councillors. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> do you want a backup plan of another councillor in your absence? Well, the whole weekend to be able to apply if it goes absolutely terribly wrong and I can't read it on Friday. I don't think there's nothing that serious at all. No, I can't yeah. 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 This one dead. You <laughs> 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 guys, I won't really care. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, no, I think two is alright. But I mean, at, at the end of the day, you can always phone up Tom and say, We've got a problem. Are you prepared yes. to do it, couldn't you? Yeah. You know, as, as a chair, because all the, the actual quality. the chairs are going to be copied in through information. Yeah, anyway. yeah. 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 this is all being yeah. yeah. the actual sums free. being spent is all yes. being agreed. Yeah. Yeah. it's just yeah. the, yeah. the, yes, the payment yeah. schedule. Yeah. 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 yeah, okay. Well, I'm happy to propose this. Did Ben propose? Well, yeah. Yeah. You propose it, did you propose it? Did you? Anyone second it? I'll second it. Right. So it's okay, Ben everyone. and John Ash and points one yeah. to five on here. Yeah. 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 Everyone happy? Yeah. Unanimous. Thank, Thank you. Migration of town council office servers data to SharePoint. <coughs> you have that information in your agenda pack. I won't read through it all because hopefully councillors have read it, inwardly digested it. I'll just do the introduction. So there are two Windows servers at the STC, a Windows SDS 2011 server and a Windows 2008 remote access server. Microsoft are stopping the extended support for both these operating systems from January 2020. This means they'll no longer get essential security updates which protect them from malicious acts and also resolve any bugs. Uh, apparently this is standard practice from Microsoft as over time they don't want to have to support outdated systems. So we've obviously been in contact with our BSTC IT support company um, who have suggested that we um, get rid of our current servers and migrate everything to SharePoint, which is essentially in the cloud. So this would result in the HP servers being decommissioned and no further server hardware or Windows servers software would need to be purchased or maintained in the future. It is all secure, obviously. So there's the key benefits, 10 points, one to 10. And then the quote over on the other side. Um, what if it Ben, don't mind me putting you on the hot seat. You're the computer I, I, expert. I, I totally agree with you. You're happy with I this, all right? Okay. Yeah, well, I know. I know you're the man who knows about computers. No, it has to, something has to be yeah. done. Otherwise, we're going to be very vulnerable to, to attacks. <laughs> so yeah, definitely. No, I totally agree with all this. Let it. Okay. I'm happy to propose it. Right, okay, you propose it. A seconder, please. Good okay. deal. Yeah. All in favour? And that's the migration and the replacement. Yeah, so it's yeah, yeah, migrating and also the um, replacement pieces for sites to enable them to actually be able to function. Okay, 7.4. Update on finance manager cover for Rachel. Yeah. So um, Rachel's actually uh, having her operation on the 21st of October with long-term treatment then following. Um, South Coast Council HR Department have been advised and supporting a number of staff. Um, Council will need to bear in mind that all standard financial work <coughs> will be covered during Rachel's absence, um, as a lot of forward work has already been done by her and she's worked loads of stuff ahead. But there will be reduced direction in respect of some aspects including forward planning and bi-monthly written reports, etc. 
So you will you will still get all the necessary financial information, but you won't necessarily get all the added stuff that Rachel does. Yeah, well, I think it's chair of finance. First of all, I've got wish Rachel on the very best. Okay. I'll say how much we appreciate her work. Um, and I know that this this lady started, hasn't she? She's been doing some training. Are, you, are you happy with her, Rachel? Is she picking it up? She, well, she's been with us for a day. Just oh, for, just one day, is it? Yeah, and she's, she's in tomorrow. She's in tomorrow, so she's going to be sort of, um, she, she's savvy with SAGE, our account system. Yeah. Um, I have shown her our forward plan, but yeah. is she, is she on the board? Is she, yeah. yeah, she is, there? yeah. The, I've left We're not going to collapse with everything. No, no. That's all right. That's I've left thing. notes everywhere and I simplified it and a lot of the stuff I put to head anyway, so to make it as easy. Yeah, well, thank you very yeah, much again, Rachel. Yeah, thank you. Hopefully, speedy recovery and get back here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> within the, um, I think it's within the, is it this, this one? Within one of the reports, there is an update on the cost implications of what is and isn't happening at this moment in time so we'll come to that when we get to have a new agenda but okay. that leads yeah. into this well I'll tell you this is just for new to me don't put it no <coughs> okay over the page agenda item 8 to do with the following financial matters 8.1 2018-19 audit sign off um you have to bear with me I've not looked at this paperwork uh, since putting this step forward so we had another clear audit for 2018-19 um, and I sent the, the report out to chairs. Uh, so it's literally just to receive the audit sign off um, and council tends to give a, a comment that goes on the website. Um, a copy of it's there in the report. We have pretty much been doing the same one for about five years now. <laughs> So, yeah, because it does actually say it's 17, 18, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, this is a copy of last year's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's pretty much been the same each year, which I, so I didn't know if council wanted to come in with a, a, a new comment. comment. Yeah, mm -hmm. to refresh it a, a little, maybe. Well, A, I don't suppose anyone will remember what happened last year. They're all um, on the website, though. Oh, yeah, yeah nice. we've got nine years' worth of all Nine users. years' worth of the same paragraph. Why <laughs> <laughs> <I> change? <laughs> Just put it down. All the other words. <laughs> It covers everything in the statement, doesn't yeah. it? And we just shuffle the words thing? around a bit. <laughs> 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 shuffle the subject. I don't know. I'm not sure that you need to change it. Because if you change the statement, the council is pleased. Yeah, when you say this is on a website though, is it one above the other, above the other, above the other, or was it on? No, well it's all within separate, you have to yeah. click within each of the years. Yeah. You should just put again, 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 <laughs> a clean, clean bill of health. I mean if you're happy to put, that's what will pop on the website. Well I'm happy if it, I think if you probably, if you've got the time which I don't think you have, if you want no. to write a number of no. spots, and I'll be like, well let's stay yeah. with this one, shall we? Yeah. Okay. I'm quite happy. It says how brilliant we are, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. And also make a, a note in the in the minutes, please, to thank Rachel again for her help. Yep. Can need a so you're just receiving the fact that the audit's been signed off, but you do need to vote on your response. So. Right. What was our response? <laughs> that. That. Do the same again. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Ditto, everyone. Anyone happy? Yeah. <laughs> Ditto. Right, 8.2, 2019-20 Income Again Expenditure Budget, budget Report and Mid-Year Review. Um, um, I won't go through the full report. Um, I put this together fairly quickly. Um, probably like I did before, um, we're in a strong position. The best thing is to look at the graphs if you don't like looking at, at numbers. So, and rather than the, um, the pie chart, um, if you go to, to these. So, the first one is income against annual budget, and it does include the preset. The actual income receives in red, and the annual budget 
is in blue, um, which, which speaks for itself. We're, sort of, uh, we're either ahead of, of um, So we're either um, outperforming the uh, projected uh, budget. The figures are slightly bought um, on the uh, BSTC and non-activity centres uh, budget because we make adjustments for bank interest uh, later in the year and at year end, which has quite a big impact. But that shows that um, income is in a very strong position and is is currently either on target or outperforming target. And then if you go to the very last bar chart, um, that's income against expenditure. And again, that clearly speaks for itself at this stage. I'd be expecting this to be halfway through budgets. Um, and a lot of them, as you can see, are well below the 50% level. So um, we are, we're pretty much in line with last year, to be honest. So uh, looking ahead, bear in mind we have coming in, we're going to be going into the budget setting season with a couple of big expenditures possibly coming up. So uh, the forward plan seems to be um, situated correctly and yeah, the income and expenditure is about where I'd expect it, or uh, better. Planned um, projects is slightly... Planned projects is slight, that's slightly different because how that works, it, it's stuff that council have approved, but the money is held in the earmark reserves, and normally by now I'd have transferred it over, but I just haven't had time at the moment. Right. But the ear earmark reserves, um, the budget, um, and expenditures, it's just the way it appears and the accounts are always equal. And then um, when a planned project comes through, such as the Brookway development, the money comes out of earmark reserves and goes into um, the planned projects. And basically the expenditures and the budgets are moved over. So they do balance <coughs> out. This is sort of just a really simplified way of of showing it rather than um, just raw numbers. Um, I did a very quick mid-year <coughs> budget review, um, not as in-depth as I normally manage to do, but uh, where things have worked ahead, um, I don't think it's necessarily sort of needed at the current time. So I've just quickly covered uh, two areas. Uh, the um, the cover whilst I'm away. At the moment, um, it is um, a template's coming in literally to sort of crunch numbers and do the, the basics on uh, 20 hours a week. The backup plan that uh, was presented to council in September has given you know um, further um, buffers if it's needed, uh, bringing external contractors in um, to to uh, sort of do audit work if further number crunching is needed and, you know or a bit more forward planning they can be brought in I haven't included them at the moment it's just going to have to be a wait and see how it goes um, at the same time we were looking to outsource payroll but um, having spoken to Terry, who's going to be our new tax, so we've got to be really nice to her. Um, she's going to try and keep that in house, just to see how Not this Terry. Oh, never Terry. Just in case. 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 It, 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 you're just going to have to see how it goes, but there are those safeguards that I've already contacted, you know, um, South Gloss and uh, DCK Accounting Solutions, and they can step in at a month's notice if needed. And those are the things that council agreed in September for you, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the extra bits. 
but I haven't included those at the moment. Um, so by the time that I actually did the income against expenditure, I hadn't adjusted any of the budgets, uh, but I have in the five year forward plan that sort of comes along a bit later. So um, I've just stepped the professional fees budget from 800 to 12,800 to, to cover the cost of the town. So um, you'll need to approve that one. Um, and um, also, uh, it was mentioned, um, I think that was at, some, at September as well, that um, we increased the play area reserve from any year-end uh, surplus. Bear in mind the uh, Baylor's Court redevelopment yeah, that's yeah. coming up and a few other things. So, um, And in the report that's coming on later on, I, th I think uh, from the year-end surplus, because I'm trying to get things in place so that um, the other Terry will know which direction to go into what, and where to put the money at year-end, because once it's calculated, there isn't much time to quickly sort of tuck it away somewhere. So we'll probably be concentrating, if Council agree, on the play area reserve and also the forward budget reserve to protect the um, forward plan going into the fifth year. Your temporary yeah. replacement then, will they come to finance meetings? Hopefully. Yeah. I think you're just going to have to see see how it goes. She is aware of one meeting a month <coughs> by the full council. Yeah. One month and then by the end of next month. So okay. it's not going to come as a shock. I think she does sort of intend to come. It, it's, it was quite difficult though sort of uh, getting someone in that covers the broad spectrum of, of my job description really. She, she does seem from first impressions a very Literally. proactive yeah. person yeah. and keen to actually yeah. get Where, involved. Where does she live? Is she local? She's not local local. I can't remember where she lives. She's not from Upperstoke though, but no. she's not that far away. She's not yeah. travelling from hundreds of miles away each day. <coughs> But she's used to uh, going out and jumping in cold, you know, at, at different places. And Where does she come from? Good no. Where does she live? No, no. Come from as in oh. where was she, where did she work before this? She this is what she does. She it's she's self employed. Oh, right. oh. But, but but came through an agency, uh, and she um, I think she works for another. Company. I think um, she does quite a few small companies. Yeah, she does a couple of days a week. And, and, yeah. Yeah. So she's used to she's so she's yeah, used yeah. to jumping in and number crunching. She's very savvy with Sage, which is our accounting and payroll systems. So it's just our forward plan is, you know, it is is a bit different to anything she's seen before. She's not used to working for a council, so. We've simplified it down, sort of how, how it's going to work. But no, I mean, I spent a whole day with her, and we covered quite quite a large area, and she she did seem really good. So she's she didn't run a mile. No, she didn't run a mile. I might have. Um, so she's uh, coming in uh, tomorrow, and then next week onwards she'll be coming in. I think at the moment it's Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays, but she can adjust as to what's needed work sort of long days or you know what what's needed mm -hmm. so good sounds like a good spot really in that mm -hmm. hopefully yeah. yeah fine okay so um do we have a proposal of this one i propose that yeah second all in favor unanimous thank you 8.3 no no we're still on this a next Sorry? part, there's a next part to 8.2, which is that bit then. Is there? No, before the air it does, because it's uh, This is the actual budget. Not <laughs> Rachel, Rachel split it into two things, because I she see. thought it would be easier. Yeah. Right. For going through everything. Well, I just started doing the report and one thing turned into another and it's like, no, this is ridiculous. So it was easier splitting it down. <clears throat> this yeah. is part of working things forward. 
So this is the budget and five year forward plan. Um, Which normally we would have on the end of the income and expenditure, wouldn't we? This, this report would normally um, hit November Council, but because I'm not here, I'm working it ahead, even though some of the decisions haven't been made, it's to say where the money, where it's going to be funded from and how it's all going to work, just to simplify it going into the budget. Um, and most of it is uh, linked to strategic planning because I, I know that some quotes are going to be hitting in November. So some of the items have already been agreed and I've included these in the forward plan that is also attached, attached to the report. Um, so the old person's tea party that council agreed, um, the community sort of festival going forward to 2022 and the restructuring of the youth budget have all been incorporated within the five year forward plan. The items coming up to be agreed, probably November and onwards, uh, is the Jubilee uh, kitchen updates. Um, and l looking at uh, expen historic expenditures, um, the, both the Jubilee and the Woodland Suite kitchens can probably be absorbed within the budget that we've already got in the forward plan for um, the Jubilee Centre maintenance. Um, budget, uh, sorry, Bailey's Court cricket changing room flooring again can probably be absorbed um, and the toilet flooring can probably be absorbed. And I've also put down the nominal codes just to, just to give the other Terry <laughs> direction <laughs> as to um, where to apply it. Um, the Bailey's Court play area replacement, that's going to be the biggie. Um, so I haven't made any adjustments at the moment, but there is 109,000 in the future play area refurbishment, and at year end will again be adding to that further. So um, I, I've just stated where that money will come from. I, um, because no idea what the quotes are going to sort of come in on that one. Um, installation of swings at the Beacon Play area, again, that's an unknown, so um, that would come from the Play Area Reserve. Uh, installation of the bus shelves. Oh, so that, that will come from Village Green Oh, sorry, from the Village Green Department, but funded from oh, the from Play the Area, area Reserve, Reserve yeah. Um, so really, it's just highlighting things that, that will need to be looked at. Uh, installation of bus shelters that was also um, discussed, that will be funded from uh, new assets, um, street furniture, um, which is not going to have a sufficient budget, um, so uh, that would have to come from the uh, street furniture reserve um, that will have £18,000 in it in next year's budget, because Previously, council had mentioned that they might want to do replace bus shelters, so we have been increasing. Um, that was it. I don't. That should be enough for two bus shelters, but you know, if if you want more, then it probably won't be. Um, installation of solar panels and other energy products. Um, don't know if you're going to go ahead with that one, but we have got. Uh, £5,000 in green resources reserve. So, you know, that it, it's just things to bear in mind when these decisions are going to be made later on. Um, is this, is this, sorry to interrupt you, is, is this just for our, <coughs> just for us to note at the moment? There are a couple of things which, which are yeah. 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 yeah, all these, these are just to note for future. Yeah, yeah. 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 okay. It's mm -hmm. probably worth noting this document though, going through November and December, um, just where the money's going to come from, from, yeah, from okay. certain things and where you're actually standing. Um, as I said, I've bought this board because normally this would come in November with the first budget draft. Uh, but because uh, being a town council, um, 
involves tax basis and this, that, and the other. It's something that your average person, unless they've, they've worked in this sector, um, they wouldn't be used to. So I'm trying to work yeah, it over yeah, okay, their head. Fine, yeah. um, again, um, just re advising that the tax base uh, figures on which the precept is based. Um, like previous years, is based on projected figures that were given out a year ago. They're likely to change. We have had drastic changes, drastic reductions or increases. So um, that's just to bear in mind going into um, the budget period. Um, and the five-year forward plan, as everyone knows, but I'm just reiterating it, at the moment has got a 0% precept increase going over the five-year term. Um, the living wage, that's all been incorporated within the five-year forward plan already following the pay restructure that took place earlier this year. Um, and just a reminder that the public works loan uh, for the office, um, the final repayment is in November 2021. That's been absorbed um, and has been for some time within the five-year forward plan. Um, the only change that I, I would suggest at the moment, bearing in mind the work is now about to start on Brook Way with the car park, uh, which is probably, or hopefully, going to lead to increased usage, um, is to increase the maintenance budget for Brook Way that we cut last year. Um, so to increase that budget from 12000 to 16000 uh, for 2021, that's been incorporated within the five-year forward plan as well. So um, if you were happy with that, that would have to um, be approved. So I'm sort of whizzing through this rather. I quickly put, um, extended the five-year forward plan on the, um, <coughs> on the schedule going into 2024-25 just with sort of projected um, increases, generally 3%, but higher in places if I know contracts are um, were on fixed term for three or four years. I've made adjustments in there already. Um, it doesn't look happy reading at the moment um, with a deficit of 107,000 at the end of 2024-25. But what I would say to new councillors is don't panic. We've been here before. This is just a projection, and we do alter things as uh, you know as we go along. And generally, at year end, we have year end surpluses that are more than sufficient to um, cover that deficit. Um, if not, then um, and depending on, upon the tax bases, how that comes in, then sometimes the precept has to has to be looked at, but. We're projecting so far forward, um, and you know, sort of managing really actively managing budgets. It's a long way to look forward. We, to and what I would Quite say is, years. we have had worse. We have had about one hundred and thirty thousand deficit um, in the past, and, and then that was more than covered at year ends carrying forward. So this is partly for new councillors yes. as well. So. Um, this, the five-year forward plan is a living document and it does change and it is purely based on projections. Yep. That's so, what it's supposed to do though, isn't it? Yeah, really yeah. yeah. To yeah. but it's surprising it. how many um, councils don't have a forward plan and most only have three years, but five makes a lot more sense. Um, I don't think we could have, um, you know, done some of the stuff that we have managed to do over the years without the five-year forward plan. Right then, okay, so what so, are you basically voting on then? Is the budget increase from the, 12 to 16, is it? From 12 to 16, and to um, add in surplus funds again to the future budget reserve at year end, at 2019-20 uh, year end. So how I would see it at, at the year end, the money um, any surplus monies available would be diverted into, into the play area refurbishment that you've already approved and then depending how the Bayless Court uh, replacement quotes come out 
and then the remainder pile it into the future budget reserve. Right. Okay, is there any questions? So does that need expanding on? Um, I've got a bit of burden that you can use. To, I, I just um, said uh, um, adding any surplus funds to the future budget reserve, and, and Council has already also highlighted that the play area refurbishment budget nominal code 3016 will also be increased. So both of those need to be agreed. So it's a bit long-winded, and I'm sorry, I'm trying to pack everything in. Okay, so are so you happy with this? Yeah, you're the speed on it? Yeah, you, you fine with it? Yeah, yeah, yeah fine. Yeah. Okay, I'll propose it, please. Ben, second or? Come on. I'll second it, then. <laughs> All in favour? <coughs> Unanimous. Thank you. Okay, 8.3 petty cash statements. Um, I haven't managed to finish those, so oh, no. okay. there, there I have been, oh, you have I've put, Due to current circumstances, the statements are unavailable. They can either be submitted to planning and environment committee in two weeks' time or full council in November for approval. We need to decide. Well, it's, not, it's not an urgent item, is it? No, uh, it could go to November, but that, that would give us a bit more time and be quite a good exercise for the other Terry to... We, right. we so you say you you want to do full council, yeah? Yeah. yeah? yeah, yeah. Okay, well I'll propose that. A second so that's In the favour? Yeah. Yeah, we'll be honest. So that is... So you propose that and then seconded. Yeah. Thank yeah. you very much. Citizens' advice. Yeah. Your funding request. <laughs> Um, this is a part of the forward planning as well. Um, the, the big funding that we do is citizens' advice and the police. The police didn't come back in time, so um, that will hit November. In the meantime, uh, citizens' advice have come in with their full report that I think is really interesting reading, uh, just to see, you know, sort of the dynamics of a few these type of um, queries and problems that they're facing from Bradley State residents and, and for new councillors just to let you know we fund citizens advice but they will only deal with people that live in Bradley State because um, years ago it, it, it was we were getting people from all over and it seemed unfair that local residents couldn't get in to see citizens advice and yet they were paying for it through their precepts. So we have made an arrangement. So citizens advice come every Wednesday um, and we give them um, a couple of free rooms and they're always in, in great demand, but um, they will redirect anyone that is not a Bradley State resident to other areas or um, that they won't actually see them um, whilst whilst they're um, on our premises. So, um, the, um, um, yeah, they're requesting 4,922, sorry, 14,922 pounds uh, for next year. Uh, the current funding is uh, 14,633. They've given a, a full breakdown. So, uh, I think it was a 2.3 percent. I don't want to have a just over a two percent. Oh, 1.98. I'm looking down here. Sorry, I said I hadn't read this. It's, uh, yeah, it's approximately 1.98 percent increase. The forward plan has got a three percent increase for this. Um, so basically, it's you know if if you want to fund it again for another year. I have to say, we do get a lot of residents coming into the office and asking when they're going to be there. I'm happy to propose funding it again for a year. Yeah, I think you're right there. Yeah, seconded by Terry. Terry, all in favour? Unanimous, thank you.
timetable for the 2020-21 budget setting process. You have that in your agenda pack. It's just details. No, it's the same year really. We just changed the dates because obviously it's a set process that we follow. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just to receive. People. It's not you don't it's have to receive. go on this year yeah. to receive this. Yeah. Um, it will be slightly different um, because rather than having the first budget draft when I go through with a fine tooth comb. Where I've tried to work stuff ahead, you'll probably just get the updated forward plan um, for next year based on the decisions that you've made over the last two months. But um, having looked at the forward plan, I, I think that's sufficient for this year. Right. Okay, so this is for noting. Any questions? No? Okay, thank you. <coughs> 8.6 to approve bills on direct debits for payment. You have to pay bills. Got any questions? I'd like to direct it, Rachel. Give her enough time before she leaves. <laughs> I didn't have time to finish the, the direct debits and bank interest either. No. Uh, we suddenly had a load of them in over um, over the last few days, so I'm aiming to do that at planning because there will be some check, uh, some payments going to planning yeah, as well. That's, that's fine. It's just normal. meeting of 7 o'clock Wednesday 18th of December.